We all know that. We're going to start with the biggest topic in the college football world, which was Jaden Rashada, a four-star quarterback, top 30 uh, player at, uh, at 247. He announced that he is going to Miami. Now, just a few weeks ago, I and I believe myself and everybody else thought that he was certainly a Florida lean. He's a California quarterback. But after he committed to Miami, it came out uh, from on three. And this was Jeremy Crabtree that was reporting. But front office sports did a really good job of, you know, kind of narrowing it down, it giving you the basics. They gave you a good summary here. It says, 2023 quarterback Jaden Rashada has reportedly agreed to an NIL deal with Miami booster John Ruiz worth $9.5 million. Now, we talked about how crazy it was that Nico uh, Iamalieva, the Tennessee commit, was getting an $8 million deal. But in this situation, this four-star quarterback, not even a five-star quarterback, is getting $9.5 million, and it is believed to be the largest NIL deal to date. Uh, the four-star turned down an $11 million offer from Florida's Gator Collective to commit to the U. Now, we will jump into this because Ruiz and the Gator Collective and the lawyer have all said, or they've all denied the reports that they have talked, that anything has even happened. The, it says Boogainer Booster John Ruiz, the Gator Collective, have denied reported conversations with lawyer Mike Caspino, who is basically the NIL lawyer, the NIL uh, management for Jaden Rashada. Uh, but this, Jean Ruiz said, the report uh, by ON3 is inaccurate. I have never spoken to Mr. Caspino about Jaden Rashada. Mr. Caspino and I have spoke about an unrelated player months ago, and I have a very, or I had a very professional and pleasant conversation. I respect him. Caspino said Mr. Ruiz is correct. I have never, ever spoken to him about Jaden Rashada. In fact, 90% of our discussions have been about our amazing kids. Uh, we both share something in common. We are deeply proud of our adult children. Now, on top of that, the Gator Collective came out and said, the recent comments by the lawyer uh, have been brought to our attention. Gator Collective have never had any communications with him about Jaden Rashada. Uh, rather, Gator Collective has refused to engage in any dialogue with Mr. Caspino on numerous occasions as the Gator Collective does not approve of his tactics and has no interest in engaging in activities which violate Florida law and NCAA interim policy and may put athletes' eligibility at risk. This is absolutely bonkers. Uh, Jaden Rashada, in December, signed one of the first NIL deals for a high schooler, which was just a four-figure sum with recruiting app Air. Uh, he did his own research and hired an NIL advisor, uh, and now, apparently, it's uh, $9.5 million for a four-star quarterback. So, I... Now, remember, this is a, a kid from California that is going all the way over to Miami to play. Somebody, somewhere, said something, and it got out, and now they're all trying to backtrack because this is an inducement. Absolutely an inducement. Now, I don't know that it's necessarily against Florida law, but I guess it would be if it's if you're paying a high schooler, right? Like if this money is not going to come to him until he gets to the school, one, yes, that's an inducement. Two, I don't think it would break state law at that point. Regardless, what are we doing? I don't even know what sport we're watching anymore. This, I, I've never... I could not imagine that we just talked last year about what a big deal it was that Bryce Young, who just won a Heisman Trophy, uh, got a million dollars in NIL deals. And I have got something in my eye. Good gracious. We, we talked about how huge that was for a college student to get a million dollars. And now, less than a year later, we're looking at a four-star quarterback that's that's apparently worth, not, and obviously this is all hearsay, this is all whatever, but apparently $9.5 million? At what, the, you, we know that this model is not sustainable. You cannot keep doing this because there is no real return on investment. You'll get something back. Can you possibly get $10 million back? I doubt it. So at some point, you're not going to be able to keep up these kinds of numbers. 
But man, this is bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. Is a four-star quarterback worth $10 million? My answer would be no. I'm curious what you guys think. Jump into the YouTube comments. I want to know your thoughts on this. Uh, I, I mean, obviously we've had a lot of California quarterbacks go across the country. Uh, Bryce Young, etc. I mean, it, we, we all know how this goes. The kids that take football seriously come over to the Southeast because they take football a little bit more seriously out here. And that is not saying anything against USC or Washington or Oregon, etc. Right? I'm just saying that the vast majority of NFL players, to get you ready for the NFL, you're going to come over and play in Clemson. You're going to play at Ohio State. You're going to play at Alabama, Georgia, Miami, Florida, Texas A&M, LSA, whatever, right? Majority SEC schools and whatnot, it will get you more prepared for the NFL. But when you're when you're getting into these kinds of numbers to pay players to come play for you, that's a whole different thing. And now, on the other side, this Gator Collective, there are a lot of people that are frustrated with Billy Napier already, and he hasn't even coached a game yet. And I don't think that it is Billy Napier's fault that they were not able to get this done with this kid. He said a couple of months ago, or last month, I guess it was, that they are not going to get into bidding wars. Do I necessarily believe that they offered $11 million and this kid left it on the table so he could go play for Mario Cristobal? I doubt it. I seriously doubt it because it doesn't seem like something that would actually happen unless they didn't know where the money was going to come from, or they didn't think that it was a real offer, right? One or the other. Regardless, I wonder if Florida is going to be able to gather this thing up correctly because we see that Miami is doing it at a, I mean, just at warp speed. They are building this thing quickly, and they understand how to, uh, the NCAA is not going to do anything, right? They're not going to be able to do anything because as soon as they try and penalize Miami or A&M or whoever else, that thing's going to go back to court and they are going to get shut down again. So the NCAA cannot enforce their own rules here. I... <laughs> this, this whole thing is so nuts. It's so absolutely nuts. Regardless, Florida fans, Miami fans, I want you in the comments. I want you to tell me, is this guy worth $10 million? That's what I want to know. This is... A four-star quarterback that there are multiple quarterbacks that are rated higher than him in this class. And yes, a lot of them have already decided where they're going to go. But $10 million for a four-star quarterback. Yes, if you hit on the position, that's one thing. But I'm curious what the contract looks like. If he doesn't pan out, we've seen a ton of four-star quarterbacks not pan out. We've seen a bunch of five-stars not pan out. If, If he doesn't immediately improve the offense, what happens? Does he continue to collect checks? I mean, I would imagine not. But this ain't the NFL. I, I, I don't know how uh, you would be able to take any of those things to court or anything. So I I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea what to expect from this. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.